Hey everyone, I am Ahmed Gad. Today, I'll be showing you how to train a Keras model using federated learning. This project has a Jupyter notebook that's running on an instance of PaperSpace Gradient that has a free GPU. Let's start by introducing federated learning. Generally, machine learning models are trained using data available on a single server. This means all the user's data must be transferred to the server for training the model. But some users are against sharing their private data with the server. So how to train a machine learning model using all users' private data? Federated learning helps to train privacy-preserving machine learning models without sharing the user's private data to a server. The process starts by creating a generic model that is available on the server. The server sends this model to the end-user devices, where the model is trained using the user's private data and only the model parameters is shared again to the server. So the server has a model that is trained using the end user's private data without sharing the data to the server. In this project, both the client and server are built using Python socket programming. The objective of this project is to create a simple Keras model that is trained using the XR training data using federated learning. The interaction between the server and the client is summarized in this figure. The client starts by sending an echo message to the server. This echo message tells the server to send its current global model to the client. And the server sends the global model to the client, where the client trains a model using its own private data, and sends the trained model back to the server. The server assesses the model using its own test data, and sends the recent model to the client again if the server finds that the model needs more training. The client retrains the model using its own private data and resends also the trained model back to the server. The server also assesses the model and sends the recent model back to the client if more training is needed. To run this project, we need two libraries to be installed. The first one is a Python library called PyGAD that trains Keras model using genetic algorithm, and the second library is TensorFlow for GPU for building the Keras model. After installing the libraries, we check that they are installed correctly by printing their versions, and you can find that the version installed of PyGAD is 2.16.0, and the version of TensorFlow is 2.4.1. The first part is about building the server, and the second part is about building the client. We can start by focusing on the server. The server starts by preparing some samples to evaluate the performance of the model trained by each client. In this example, we are using an XOR gate with two inputs and two classes, and so we have four samples. And next is to build the generic model that are available on the server. In this case, there is an input layer with two inputs because the training data has just two inputs, and there is a dense layer with four neurons and the sigmoid activation function, and an output layer with two classes because we have only two classes in this example and the activation function used is softmax and the model is built and its summary is printed where we have only 22 parameters after building the Keras model Nick is to create a population of solutions for the Keras model using a class called Keras GA available in the PyGAD library and each solution consists of 22 parameters of the Keras model if we have 10 solutions, then the population size is 10 by 22. The population is created as an instance of the Keras GA class, where its constructor accepts two parameters. The first one is the Keras model, and the second one is the number of solutions, which is set to 10. In the next step, we create the socket over which the Keras model is sent from the server to the client. The socket is created by calling the socket function, which accepts the family parameter, which is assigned in this case to the AF underscore init constant, which means IB version 4 addresses is used by this socket. The type of this socket is set to sock underscore stream constant to use the TCP protocol for creating connections between the server and the client. Once the socket is created, it can be bound to an IB version 4 address on the port number. The IP address used in this case is 127.0.0.1 and the port number is set to 5000. You can use the IP version for address used by your machine. 
and IB version 4 and both numbers are pound to the socket using the find function. Now the socket can listen to connections by calling the listen function. Each incoming connection to the server is handled by an instance of the listen thread class, which is a thread that extends the thread class. It can be started by calling the start method. And here is the listen thread class, which has a run method. And this method is the first method to be called when the thread starts. In the run method, an infinite while loop is used to keep the thread alive as long as the connection exists. The first thing the thread does is to access this connection, which returns the connection itself and some information about the client. Then an instance of the socket thread is created to serve this connection. And this thread is started by calling the start method. Let's know more details about the socket thread class. And the constructor of this class accepts four parameters, and all of these parameters are stored as an instance attributes in this class. And the first attribute is called connection, which is a socket connection with the client. The second one is a client info, which has some information about the client. The buffer size, which is the maximum amount of data to be received at once from the client. And the receive timeout, which is a timeout in seconds, after which the connection will be closed because there is no interaction between the server and the client. This class also has four methods. The first one is the run method, which is executed once the thread starts. The second one is the receive, which receives data from the client, and reply, which sends a reply or response to the client message. And finally, model averaging method, which calculates the average between the parameters received by the client model and the current parameters in the server's model. And this is a template of the socket thread class. You can see that the class extends a threading dot thread class, and its constructor accepts the four parameters discussed previously, where the default value for buffer size is 1024, and the default type out is 5 seconds. And all of these parameters are used as instance attributes. And here also the four methods we mentioned previously, which are the run method, and receive model averaging and reply. For the model averaging method, it accepts the server's model and the parameters received in the client's model to create their average. And the reply method accepts the received data by the client to create a proper reply to the client's message. In the next four sections, each of these methods is explained. The run method is the first method to be executed after the thread starts. It starts by storing the start time at which the connection is started between the server and the client. Then a call to the receive method is made to receive data from the client. And if the status received by the receive method is zero, then the connection is closed. And after receiving everything from the client, a call to the reply method is made to return a message to the client. And for the receive method in the socket thread class, it has a variable called receive data, which stores all the data received from the client. And also there is a flag that is set to true only when all the client's data is received. And to keep the server receiving data from the client as long as the client is sending something and no timeout occurs, then the while loop keeps the server receiving data. And the first function to be called is the receive function in the connection to receive data. And this data is appended to the receive data variable. And the call to the bickle.load function is made to uh, decode the data received from the client. And if this function is passed, this means all the data is received from the client. In this case, the flag is set to true. And if the client didn't send something, to the server uh, for a number of seconds that exceeds the timeout allowed by the server, then the connection will be closed because the status returned by the receive method will be zero. And if all the data is received and the all data received flag is set to true, then the client's data will be decoded by making a call to the bickle.loads function. In this case, the received data is returned with a status of one. And the timeout timing will be reset each time the client sends something to the server.
Now let's move to the reply method. And this method expects that the data received from the client is a dictionary which has two keys. The first key is subject, which is a message subject, and the second key is called data, which is assigned a value that represents the data received from the client. And the subject can be either equal, model, or done. It can be set to echo at the beginning of the connection when the client asks the server to send its model. And it is set to model when the client has a model to be sent to the server. And finally, it can be set to done by the server to inform the client that no more training is needed. And here is the implementation of the reply method, which accepts, as we said previously, the received data by the client. It starts by making sure that the decoded data type is dictionary and has only two keys, which are data and subject. And if the subject is equal, then the server responds with its most recent version of the model. And the data key in this dictionary is also another dictionary with three keys. And the first key is the population weights, which is the parameters of the Keras model. And the second one is the model underscore JSON, which is a model architecture of the Keras model in JSON format. And finally, the number of solutions in the population. This is the format of the dictionary prepared by the server to be sent back to the client, where the subject is set to model because the server has a model to be sent to the, to the client, and the data, which is the dictionary prepared previously with the three keys, population ways, model JSON, and number of solutions. And if the subject of this message is set to model, then the server fetches the model parameters sent from the client and assesses the model. Or evaluates its performance. And if the model has an accuracy of 1, then nothing is returned back to the client because the server thinks that the model is trained and no more training is needed. But if the accuracy is less than 1, then the server uh, calculates the average between the parameters in its current model and the model received from the client. And the model with average parameters also has its accuracy evaluated. And if the accuracy is less than one, then the most recent model as the server will be sent back to the client for more training. And the last method in the socket trade class is a model averaging method, which accepts the server's model and the parameters in the client's model. This method simply loops through each layer in the Kira's model Calculate the average between its parameters in the server and the client's model and return this back the model with the average parameters. And this is everything about the server in this project. Now let's move to the client. And we can see also that each client has some samples in the training data. For example, this client has only two samples of the training data for the XOR problem. Another client may use the other two samples in the training data, and they work together in training the model that are available in the server. In the client, the socket also is created by calling the socket function, and the connection is made to the server based on its IP version for address and port number. After the connection is created between the client socket and the server socket, an instance of the receive thread is created and started to receive data from the server. And this is a template of the receive thread class, which has the receive method and the run method. And for the run method in the receive thread class, it has an infinite loop that keeps the client thread active to receive data from the server. And the thread stops when the server responds with a subject set to done, which means the server model is trained and no more training is needed. At the beginning of the connection, the client doesn't have a model, and this is why the subject is set to equal. When the server receives a message from the client with a message subject set to equal, then the server sends its current model, and this model is received by the client by calling the receive method. And if this method fails to execute, then the status will be zero, which means the while loop will be stopped. And if the server's message is since successfully, then it will be parsed and making sure that the subject is set to model. In this case, the server's data 
is returning. And for the prepare underscore GA function, this function simply creates an instance of the PyGuard.ga class to return an instance of the genetic algorithm that will be used to train the Kiros model for a number of generations equal to 150. To evaluate the performance of each solution evolved by the genetic algorithm, a fitness function calculates a fitness. Where the higher the fitness value, the better the solution. And the other method in the receive ray class is the receive method, which works similarly to how the receive method in the server's class work by having a variable called receive data that receives the server's data in a while loop. And this continues until all the data from the server is received or if a timeout occurs. That's it for this tutorial. Just to recap, we saw how to train a Kiros model using federated learning. Both the server and the client are created by using socket programming in Python, where we created the socket, bind it to an IP address and port number, and listen for connections, accept the connections, and send and receive data from the client. Thanks for watching.